Hi everyone, in this video we'll be looking at uh, webhooks and how to install them or add them to your Amazon decision tree. So I'm going to click edit here to look at this webhooks decision tree. You can see it's a very simple one, it's a good title page, what's your name, it's firing a webhook and then it's moving on to title page. Uh, you can add decision nodes in here to split off your webhook so you can webhook uh, different paths to different uh, to basically fire your leads into different webhooks. They can be entirely different systems, or they can be the same uh, system that you're sending webhooks, your webhook to, or your leads to, via webhooks. Uh, the system doesn't care. It, it's just URL, and you fire the URL, um, or you fire the, the data into the URL, uh, wherever you want. All right, so I'm going to have a look at this one here. So it's got webhook.site, so I'm going to quickly go to webhook.site update the the webhook so I've got a uh, copy to clipboard so the reason for using the reason for using a web web uh, a hook dot site is so that you can make sure it's working first before you start um, moving it into whatever platform that you're working on because this is the simplest way to test to see that leads hook is firing the webhook uh, and then you separate the problem of firing the webhook from leads hook versus receiving the data on the other side. So this is purely to test that the data is coming in from leads hook. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to replace this with the new URL. So what I'm doing is I'm just copying this URL and pasting it over here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just turn this into a normal field, uh, just, uh, um, just normal text value rather than a custom field. So I'm just going to put uh, nick at test.com. I'm um, sorry, it's first name. So I'm going to put uh, nick here. Right, uh, forget the header for now. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. Uh, now to test it, I'm just going to go activate. And let's link, open up a new page, <laughs> I'm going to have a new test, uh, start now my friend, uh, what's my name, okay, forward, and uh, that's basically taking to the results page, um, but if I come over here, I should see that it's fired, so there you go, it's fired the webhook, it's telling me where it's uh, coming from. Uh, and uh, there you go, first name is Nick. So now I'm going to, so that's working. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in here, deactivate. Oh, by the way, you need to activate to fire your webhook, so I'm going to deactivate. Okay, I'm going to go over here and um, change this to first underscore name because that's the custom field, which is right over here. Okay, so that's the one. Okay, so let's that. And I'm going to save it. Activate. And let's fire this again. So let's make sure it's activated. Yep, it's activated. Let's refresh. Start. forward, and there you go, it's fired again, let's go have a look here, uh, and that's my second one, so it's, it's basically adds it like this, it has a date and time stamp on it, so I'm going to be looking at the one uh, that's done two minutes later, and you can see that Nick is coming through, which means the custom field is firing uh, as well, so because of what I've done is I've changed it, so first name, which is captured on this page, which is what's your first name, uh, which is right over here. Uh, is getting pushed through uh, onto the webhook. Right, so the webhook's working, nice and simple. I'm just going to quickly cover what the interface is about. The title, it can be anything, that's that's just uh, you separating them. So if you're going to have 10 webhooks sitting inside one decision tree, then you want to name them well, such as your list name or client name or um, your lead distribution system, uh, however you want to you um, title this up, you can add the title in. 
Next comes the URL. Uh, now, almost always it's going to be post, uh, but your API documents will tell you what to do. So, yeah, mostly, uh, almost always it's post, but uh, be sure to check the API documents for that. That's going to be the URL, and this is where you add in your uh, your, your data. Now, if you're going to push through uh, multiple custom fields, uh, then just give me a sec while I quickly. Uh, bring about uh, some nuances with uh, pushing custom fields uh, so that that way we're all clear as to what to do. Okay, so now I've added in uh, multiple fields. Uh, this is from a real example of uh, a, a webhook that goes through to a pretty large uh, ESP or CRM. So you can see uh, they've even got uh, an entity called contact and the contact has its uh, variables or its uh, uh, custom fields and then we've got custom here again which has got its own so the API documents will normally tell you the structure of your data uh, normally in, in the JSON format uh, and sometimes depending on your ESP once again it all depends on who you're working with you might be asked to put an API key in so it's going to be an API key with your credentials so that way uh, in the, uh, the system or the CRM through, to whom you're sending the data knows that uh, it's, this uh, data is, is valid because it's coming from, from, uh, from you. Uh, some systems also tell you uh, that if they allow multiple formats of, of content. Uh, so in that case, uh, they might require that you put content type is applications uh, for slash JSON, their XML, or there are other formats as well with which, uh, because uh, webhooks don't follow a standard protocol as such. Uh, the most common one is JSON, but there are uh, other formats around as well. Uh, so almost always it will be JSON, but if it's not, then uh, your API documents or the CRM that you're working with will tell you what it should be or would be. And that's basically in a nutshell what it is. So to, to add extra fields, uh, always make sure there's a uh, 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 double quotation uh, inside which is going to have your the, the uh, the variable name and then the custom field that you're going to put that it's from lead hook which is once again um, double quotation marks and then a colon in the middle here and then a comma to move on to the next one and, uh, and, some, and so sometimes you might have an entity that you have to edit from it as well right but the api documents will tell you how to send them so what we want to do uh, so the reason why uh, i ask that you test webhook.site first because whenever you get back to us with a support query we'll already ask you well have you tested in webhook.site because this does not require any authentication there's no API key required there's none of that stuff so if you can make this work here then you know that the webhook is firing from leads so the data out is not the problem it's the data in that's the problem so if that's the case then that's that's uh, something that you can work with your third-party system but the best way to do it is to is to trim down everything remove everything, just bring it back down to its bare minimum, which I showed early in the video, which is uh, basically e uh, first name equals and hard code the name. So at least that, if that comes through through your, through your third party system, then you know that, that the data is coming through, it's being accepted, and these settings are correct. So oftentimes it's messing around with these settings um, that you have to work out. So the first thing to validate is your output from Leadsook which is easy to do, we are on webhook.site and once you've done that, all you do is you just change the URL with the URL of the of, uh, of your CRM system or, or lead distribution system uh, and uh, change these. These are optional, uh, not every system requires you to have an API key, not every system requires you to tell them what kind of content this is, uh, some do, some don't, it all depends on, uh, on the platform you're working with. So I hope that uh, gives a, a uh, good overview of how to go about setting up webhooks and if you have any questions as always please email us at uh, help at uh, thank you and bye for now